In this video, we're going to compare the Sigma 14 to 24 millimeter lens versus the older Nikon 14 to 24. Now, the Nikon's been around a long time, so we've been waiting for a lens like the Sigma for quite a while now. Hopefully, it has better optics, and we'll see just how well it performs. Now, if you want to see all of these comparisons up close, you can head over to my website. I'll have a link to this page in the description, but I've got before and afters that show the Sigma versus the Nikon. Uh, and you'll get a pretty close-up look at how these actually perform. You can also even download the full-res JPEGs if you want a closer look. Uh, but today we're going to be using Lightroom to compare all of our images. And we're going to look at a series of images, both at 14 millimeters and at 24 millimeters. And I think we'll have a pretty good idea here at the end of which lens comes out ahead. The first thing we're going to look at is the RAW files at 14 millimeters. So right out of the gate, the first thing I notice is that the Sigma is a little bit warmer than the Nikon, and it's also just a tad bit darker. Uh, and if we were to go over to DxO Mark, what we would see is that the Sigma just gets in just a hair or less light of uh, transmission value than the Nikon. So in this case, the Nikon does a little bit better job, but realistically, it's not that big a deal at all. It's probably less than even a, a quarter stop or anything like that. So moving on, I edited both photos exactly the same, so we'll see a better comparison of how these actually look uh, further through our workflow. And what we see is the same picture where the Nikon is a little bit cooler than the Sigma, and also if we really pay attention here in the corners, there's more of these branches visible on the Nikon image, which would tend to indicate that the Nikon is just slightly wider than the Sigma. So if you really need a wide angle, uh, the Sigma doesn't quite live up to the Nikon's extreme wide angle. Again, this is probably less than a millimeter, especially at such a wide angle, but something to be aware of. Moving on, this is going to be one of the most important aspects of this comparison is the coma or astigmatism and chromatic aberration of our lenses. So if we really zoom in here, one thing I notice is that the Nikon right away has a lot more chromatic aberration, especially in the corners here. Uh, if we look at all these stars, they have a lot of chromatic aberration, and it's fairly well corrected on the Sigma. Now, they both have a pretty ex extensive flare here on that. I'm assuming that's a planet there. Uh, but again, we'll look at another coma comparison here in a little bit, but clearly the, the Sigma is superior in this department. Now, we've looked at all of our 14 millimeter shots for right now, so we're going to move over to our 24 millimeter images. And here are the raw photos straight out of the camera in 24 millimeters. Now, at this point, they look virtually identical. There's been no processing done, and they're both pretty dark. And that's because I used a pretty fast shutter speed. That way, there wouldn't be any star trails in the image. So let's look at the edited photos next so we can have a better idea of the difference. In this case, we see pretty much the same story as we saw at 14 millimeters, where the Nikon is a little bit brighter, a little bit more blue and the Sigma a little bit warmer and darker. Again, not really a big difference at all. We can make these look identical in about 20 seconds in Lightroom or Camera Raw. The last thing I want to look at is the vignette because let's say you have the Rokinon 14 millimeter for an example. That is a very, very heavy vignette and that causes a whole host of problems when we're doing our uh, processing. So in this case, both images do very well in vignette. The Nikon is a little bit heavier here in the corners and the Sigma definitely pulls through with just a very minor amount of vignette at 14 millimeters. And then we'll look at 24 millimeters. And virtually the same here. I'd be hard pressed to tell you which one is which, frankly. Uh, so again, both lenses perform extraordinarily well. And that's pretty surprising. Uh, the Nikon is, I think, over 10 years old at this point, and the Sigma is brand new. So I would have expected. Uh, a little bit more of an improvement, but that just goes to show you how well the Nikon has held up after all these years. You can't really beat it. Uh, but of course, there is one last thing to consider, and that is the price. So the Nikon normally retails for $1,900. It's currently on sale, but that'll probably be over here in a day or two. So for $1,900 for an, a 10 or 11 year old lens, uh, I believe it is, versus the brand new Sigma, which is $1,300. So you're saving $600 right out of the gate. So in that uh, criteria, I would say by far the Sigma is the best lens to go with. You save $600, you get better uh, chromatic aberration performance on the new Sigma, as we saw in this example. So you're going to have less coma, less chromatic aberration, and uh, just a little bit less vignette too, especially at 14 millimeters. So with all that in mind, if you're looking to get a new wide-angle lens and you don't mind spending over $1,000, 
I would definitely say the Sigma is by far your best bet if you're on Canon or Nikon. Now, there's also the Tamron 15 to 30, which is kind of a, an odd lens out. It's not your standard 14 to 24 that we've come to expect, but that's still a great lens. And that one, I believe that one is uh, 1100 or 1200. So you can save even more uh, if you're tight on cash there. Yeah, normally it's 1200, so you can save another 100 or $200 generally. Uh, but that one, you get a little bit less light in through the lens, and you're also losing a, a millimeter on the wide end, which is uh, pretty substantial, especially if you're shooting indoors, believe it or not. If you want to see my comparison between the Nikon and the Tamron, I've got a video on that already. Uh, but overall, uh, at this point in time, as of mid-2018, the new Sigma 14-24 and is by far the best wide angle that I've seen on the market. And it really does a great job, especially when compared directly to the legendary Nikon 14-24mm to lens.